So everybody that's on Zoom, thank you so much for joining. I'm super, super, super excited to have everybody with me because painting and doing something creative is so good for the spirit. And this is just exactly what we need right now. So um, let's go through the supplies so I know that everyone's got what they need in front of them. Um, first thing, I like to lay something down. So uh, if it's reusable, like any type of anything. So we've got newspaper. So lay out some newspaper because it does get really messy. So lay it down. And then um, once you lay your newspaper down, I've got it all over my tabletop here. I want you guys to go run out and grab some jars and straws and dish soap. So once you have your, get all this stuff together. Perfect. Hi, everybody. On my Instagram, I finally figured it out. Thank you, Zachariah. Hi, everybody. So I'm just going through um, what we're gonna need to start the project. So I'm asking everyone to lay out their newsprint. And then I'm also, here we go, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. I want you guys to see my table. I love you all. Grab your jars, grab some dish soap, any kind of soap. Um, you can grab, I know everyone's got some kind of food coloring in their house. I've actually gone and I got some beet juice for those that want to use natural color. You can also put turmeric in water like I've done here. So anyone that's really interested in the natural colors, we've got beet juice, we've got turmeric. Um, but truly, I just want everyone out there to use what they have. So it's about having fun. It's about using what you've got. I found some old inks. So see how they're all stained and used? You can put these colored inks in there. Um, so you dump that in the water with the bubbles. And if you don't have that and you have food coloring, dump these in. So what we're making is a painting for anyone that's tuned in. We are starting a painting. And so when you're starting a painting, often some people have very hard time getting inspired to like just start. So this is a fun way of just starting. This is exciting because the more dye you put in your water, the more colorful the bubbles are gonna be. So this is how we're gonna start our painting. Once you get your waters ready, I always like to have like three colors going. Any type of paper that you're going to use, watercolor paper, plain paper, printer paper, poster board, I don't care. Just get your paper and get going. Um, so let's first get our jars together of color. What I love to do is put as much color as I humanly can in these jars because you wanna make sure that the dye really comes through the bubbles because this is what's gonna get us started. Um, and I like to go for broke with colors because the richer the dye is, the better the bubbles look. And the bubbles are sort of creating the imprint of how we're going to start our design. So one, I'm gonna give you guys a little precursor. I got a couple done ahead of time just so you can kind of see how we're gonna start. But see this? See how I made a mess, but the bubbles sort of like rest on the paper and create a pattern of its own. And this will become the template of where we take our painting next. If you guys want to do a placemat, make it placemat size. If you want to do a greeting card or something smaller, I don't often use scissors. I'll just get my papers together in whatever size that I need. So in this situation, I'm just going to take my paper and I'm going to get it in half because I'll make like a postcard style too. So get your papers together in the size you want them. I don't necessarily want these things to be perfect because the idea is you kind of have to let the dye do its own thing. But I like to have my shapes and my paper sizes together because it just makes it go so much faster. Um, I'm going to show you another one that I had that's getting ready. But this here is another one that I did ahead of time with bubbles. So that's gonna be how we get it going. Okay, get ready for the fun part. 
Now we're gonna blow bubbles, guys. So this is where it gets legit messy. Um, so you gotta blow. See, and you want it to actually like bubble up like crazy. So, okay. See how the bubbles are up like this, but it's colorful. Then you kind of take the paper and you put it on top. And when you see the color that's popping off, like I don't think I have enough dye in this one, so I'm gonna put more in. It's subtle, it's pretty, but I want more. So I'm gonna dump more dye in this. So as you go, you're gonna see that you need more color. Okay, keep blowing bubbles. Don't breathe in, cause you'll breathe in soap. Kind of the bigger the bubble, the better. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Here we go. Here we go. Mix your colors. And that's why I said put down newspaper. So anyone that's just joining us, we're blowing bubbles on paper to create bubble prints that we are putting on our paper. I know, Monica, you're seeing this. Isn't this crazy? You think this is nuts, right? But it's, it's actually quite beautiful once it's all done. It looks really pretty. So keep adding colors till you get your, your max. And I also want to add more dish soap to mine so that the bubbles get really, really crazy. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go. Yes. Other things to know, if you're just joining us, Food coloring is magical because it makes it really, really highly pigmented. So just get going with your pigments and keep mixing. This is the baseline of your work and this is the most important. So things to think about when you're doing this bubble piece is to keep your color schemes together. So you wanna have colors that are like together because they're gonna mix eventually. So cool colors, warm colors are best to keep in a group. Um, and that's where when they mix up, it's going to look stunning. Um, and this is sort of getting you going, getting the flow going, because if you haven't painted in a while or you're not used to painting, this is a fun way of just getting yourself rocking and rolling. Okay. Look at that. Look at that blue bubble. Look how rich that is. Okay, here we go. Oh, girl. Yes! Okay, then you start seeing it happening and you're, you get excited. You start seeing your imprints happening. Yes, yes. Yeah, so the more dye you do, the richer the colors get and the more you can kind of keep layering it. So I've gone with more cool colors but see, as you keep layering it, it gets more, it gets more beautiful, right? So just keep going with the layers. I've gone with like a purple, a pink, and a blue. Make a mess. Yes. So when you get the big bubbles on it, it kind of creates a circle. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it creates like a, a circle print. Um, sometimes... I smash things off the side because I want it to look a little, there, I got a little bit of a blue there. Okay, check this out. I can see like a lot of dye on that end, so I'm kind of just going for it. Look, and then I've got a nice big blue splotch there. So if you let the dye kind of rest on the surface of the bubbles, you can get a more saturated bubble. But this is cool, I gotta show you this. See how the bubbles rest on top of each other? and they create that kind of fun vibe, it's good. If you guys have me on speaker view on, um, can you see, if you're on Zoom, because I'm doing Zoom and Instagram, um, put me on speaker view, because then you'll see more of the table. Um, but yeah, guys, look, it's getting beautiful. The more you add, the more you blow, the more you layer it, layer it, layer it, layer it, look! Just takes a minute, and then once you let the colors start to, like, look at how the colors are mixing here. 
<gasps> Magical. Um, there's questions here. So will it work with glitter in it? It won't work with glitter in it yet because you have to put glitter in it once the paint's dry. So this is a really messy wet part. And what starts to happen when the paint, when the paper gets really wet is it starts to curl. So what you're gonna do is let the wet paper start to dry and I'm gonna start another one. And the idea is just you, you keep going with it. So anyone just tuning in, I'm hosting a paint night with Bullfrog Power. Actually, while you're doing that, I wanna tell you about Bullfrog Power. Because um, I've had friends ask me, like, what are you paying for? What is this all about? Bullfrog puts renewable energy onto the grid on your behalf to match the amount of energy your home uses. <clears throat> so whatever my home is using in energy is what I'm paying back to Bullfrog to create renewable energy. And I've been doing that for 11 years, so I'm a super fan. They've been doing this for 15 years. Um, if you, does anyone live in Canada? If you do live in Canada, um, I just wanted to say that anyone living in Canada, there's no real green energy yet, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but the, if you want to do green energy in Canada, you'd have to be completely off the grid or have solar panels. So if you don't have solar panels and you're not living off the grid, this to me is something that we're going to have to do in the meantime. So um, oh, who's this? Oh, we worked together in Montreal last year. Amazing. Rubla, 78. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Uh, is there anything else? Bullfrog sources green electricity from low impact hydro and wind facilities. So if you guys missed my little demo off the top, you know all those fun windmills that you see when you're driving into the big city? This is the inspiration behind my art project. So that's why we're blowing bubbles. So keep going. And I also want you guys to see the wind. We're creating our own wind here. We're blowing the bubbles with the wind. And as mentioned, the more dye you put in, the more soap, the better it looks. So here we go. Look at this. Here we go. We might need to take a Poppy wiener dog break because Poppy is feeling really needy right now. She's crying. She wants some attention. Oh, I love that someone said they're going to use this and they're going to write calligraphy on top. Oh, this is so great. Okay, so guys, let's keep making a mess. And you can switch your colors depending on how many jars you have, but the idea is you blow bubbles and like, I'm, I'm even sometimes just like adding my own little touches. If you wanted to kind of hold the end of the straw, drop it on and then blow. You can do that too and you can get some pretty cool effects. So you hold the end, you get a little bit of paint put in the, in the straw, and then you can kind of just drop it on and then blow it around. Is there anybody that has any questions so far? How are we doing? Are we doing good? Let's do a poppy break. I think the peoples want a poppy break. So I think we need to see poppy before we keep going. Poppy? Poppy? The people want to say you. The people, the people want to say you. Okay. Guys, this is my wiener dog, Poppy. And she loves the camera. Poppy, say hello to the people. Say hello to the people. We're taking a wiener dog break so you guys can keep blowing your bubbles. Poppy, say hello everyone. Say hello. Hi everyone. Nice to see you. So please keep blowing your bubbles because we have to get rolling on these paintings. So once you've got your bubbles kind of where you want them, they're resting and you've got a really cool print, let me know. Puppy? Puppy? Say hello 
to the people. Wait, with your paintings. How are we doing? Oh, Tara, yes. Yes, this is, is it Takashi? This is one of my paintings that I got by an artist in Winnipeg when I was in Winnipeg. Oh my gosh, how many years ago was that? Unbelievable. I think it was, what was that, like four years ago? Yes, oh my gosh, Michelle. Poppy, I say you. Um, and for those wondering, yes, I did just freshen up my pink hair. Um, okay, are we ready? We have our bubbly paintings, right? Guys, make a sound if you want me to keep going. Make a sound if you want me to keep going. Make some noise. Let's get some things going here. I want us to get going on the next phase. Now, you can pause this, check out this video later, and pick it back up where we are. Or we can, I'm just going to keep going with the process. But um, this is literally step one. Some people are going to like this just as it is from blowing the bubbles. What's very cool is that it does its own thing. But what I want to do is create a piece of art Tiffany style. So when we're doing art like this, we're multimedia. So what happens is we're mixing markers and crayons and we're mixing oil pastels. It's anything you have. So now is the time we're going to clear our area. We're pulling out our paintings and we're going to add the next stage. So these I actually turned into placemats. So I don't know if you guys have noticed they look a little bit shiny. It's because I put a film on them, which we'll do after they dry. But let's clear our area and let's get the next round of our supplies out. So we're gonna get rid of our bubbles and we're gonna pull out other paints. We're gonna pull out our chalk. We're gonna pull out oil, pastels, whatever you got. So let's clear our area and pull out the next step. So, I don't know how you guys are with the newspaper, but I love having like big heaps of newspaper around. So see, I doubled this up. Now I'm just gonna flip it in the other direction so that I have nice clean area. It's very good to just clean up your zone, clean up your zone. Um, okay, so I'm gonna work off some of the pieces I already did. So this is roughly what it's gonna look like. Um, you guys can see how loose I did this, right? I actually left the containers where the bubbles were so I could see the circles from the jar. Um, I, this got really, really wet and kind of, I spilled, but then I just kept blowing bubbles on top. So you can really go and just keep adding. This one, I was kind of blowing things around and giving it some interesting texture. But again, you can see all the bubble details. And the one I literally just did, I'm gonna show it to you. Where is it? It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more soft and low key, but you can still see the details. So, like a good recycler should, I've got all my oil pastels, all my little pastels, everything's here. Oh my gosh! Art gets crazy, you know? I just dropped my phone. So, pull out your oil pastels. I've got these Louis Sherry chocolate boxes that I saved, and I put all my pastels in them. So, um, and I use my pastels, oil pastels, watercolor crayons. Um, it could be anything. It could just be pencil crayons. It could be regular crayons. I've got regular crayons here. The idea is use what you have and layer. So I'm gonna lay these things in front of me and I'm gonna find a space. So what I really like about this one here is I have space and I'm gonna work around. So being a former art facilitator, I like to work in colorways because I think when you're starting to uh, create something, you wanna work within your colorway. So I'm gonna grab a light uh, pastel and I'm literally just going to work the color on top and I'm gonna kind of brush it in and start creating gestures on top of the paint. If your paint's wet, no problem. 
Because if you want to keep going right now, you, it starts to dry pretty quick, especially if you use a heavy soft paper. And if you grab a pastel on sort of a damp paper, it creates this nice rich darkness. So actually, you know what I'll do? Is I'll start with the wet one first, so I'm kind of in line with what you guys are working with. But um, so because the bubbles work in a natural circular shape, I'm just taking oil pastel and I'm kind of working that same shape where the bubbles landed in some bright colors. So I'm gonna start kicking this one up a little bit. This one was, hi Ellen, Alicia from Brant County, what's up? Um, See right here? Okay, great. So start working with the natural shapes of the painting. Often you don't necessarily need to do a pattern or a design. You can. But this is going to be just following the natural lines of what's happening here. Oh my gosh. Vava, you're killing me. <laughs> I gasp, she said. So if you're working with pastels, you can kind of just work it fast and work within your circle. So I'm just gonna do some quick circle lines. Any questions as we go? Guys, see, I'm just working circles here. So I'm working within the little bubble lines. And I've got my oil pastels. You can do the same thing with a paintbrush. You can do the same thing with marker. You can do the same thing with um, crayons. I can just keep changing my media right now to show you. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, but the idea is that you kind of just let the natural shapes of what you created with the bubbles guide the art. And this is a really great way for anyone that's interested in getting involved in art to kind of feel like they can just get in the flow and get unstuck. Um, who's with me on that? Do you, do you feel that? That you, yeah, you guys feel that? Here we go. Guys, check it out. See how I'm mixing? So I've mixed this like darker blue with a light pink and a red. What's up, Chris? I'm staying in my bubble, girl. Um, I'm gonna add purple now because a natural mix of those colors is purple, blues, pinks. And I'm literally just grabbing the chalk and I'm going in natural lines. I'm getting my hands dirty and I'm working the material. When you're working in art, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to mix things around. Don't be afraid to work with the natural wetness of the paper to let it do its thing. Um, oil pastels don't stain at all. One of the questions is do oil pastels stain? No, because they fix, they stay put. Whereas these are chalk pastels. Um, they are a lot more messy, but th they don't stain. They look, they're really messy looking, but I'll be able to wash my hands and this will come clean. Um, okay, so let's keep going, guys. I'm going to show you some colorways that I'm working with here, just so you can see what I'm mixing. Because I think it's really important to know the variety of colors that we have here. So this is the variety of chalk pastels that I'm working with. And all of these colors look magic together on top of the watercolor or the um, food coloring that we've got here. Are you with me? Back to the shout out to Bullfrog for making this all happen. Are you guys having fun? Is everyone having fun in there? Yes, Wendy, I can see you. Sah Sahara, what's up? Hi. Hi, Sahara, I can see you because your screen's up on Zoom. Um, guys, I have a bit of an affinity right now. What's up, Rosie? Kathy, Dara, oh my gosh, my peoples. I'm so grateful for all of you to join in tonight. I just threw a little orange in on the mix. And what I love when I get going on little moments like this, little fun fact, you can make a bunch of these and keep them super, super small and they become amazing cards. People love getting handmade little elements. You can even splice this in half. Like I can take this puppy and I can make it into two right now. I know you think this is crazy, but if you don't want to do big art and you want to keep it super small and very um, attainable, this is super fun and easy. And look, look how stunning that is as a card. Amazing. Um, when I was originally talking to Bullfrog about this idea, I like the concept. Oh, by the way, guys, 
I double banded this a bunch of times with my thicker paper because I like to see the raw edge when I when I rip it in half because it gives it a really great texture. So don't feel like you always have to pull out scissors, especially when the paper is a little bit damp. It gives a really great texture. Let me show you. See, I kind of just splice it in half and it gives a really beautiful texture. So now I actually have two little paintings and now I can work with these two little paintings. Because this one's a little smaller, a little bit more blue, I think I'm gonna introduce a new color. So I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna be crazy. And I'm gonna throw yellow in the mix here. Give it a little bit of something because yellow is just so wild and unexpected. And I'm kind of playing with this. If you have watercolor pencils, that's another fun thing to pull out. Um, I've got a little jar of water here. So let me just show you if you want to add watercolor uh, pencils to this and what it looks like. Rosie, you betcha. I'm going to pull out my old canvas collection here. For anyone that's been following along, I've made canvas clothing over the years for um, creatives that they can create in so that whatever you're wearing that day, you can just shove your canvas smock on top and always, you know, be ready for action. Um, and so this is me using a watercolor crayon on top of this. And again, I'm just following the lines of the bubbles with this blue crayon. And I'm gonna show you what it looks like first before I blend it. So this is just a little watercolor crayon. And then I'm gonna take my paintbrush, wherever it could have gone. Here we go. I've got a little jar of water here at the ready. And I'm just gonna color it in, wetting that pencil. And it looks kind of magic. <sighs> Nikki wants a Tiffany Pratt craft show. What is this? Like watching, um, who's that painter? Why am I drawing a blank? Who's the guy? Come on guys. Who's the guy we used to watch paint? Come on. Come on, what's his name? What's his name? Bob Ross, right? Yes, Bob Ross. Okay, I feel like this is like Bob Ross gone wrong though. He, but he did talk about his animals and his creatures quite a bit. And of course I had Poppy in the mix, so I'm no different. All of us artists, weird types, really love our animals. Bob Ross, yes, thank you, right? This is like watching Bob Ross. If I took my hair down, trust, it would be just as crazy as his, because I had to put it up today. I got my roots done and it was blown out. Megs did it today. Okay, so check this. See, I, and I'm picking it up and I'm letting it get all drippy, but isn't that kind of cool by adding the darker blue? See, it's kind of cool. And then you see the yellow kind of coming through. So that, I can say that that one, I'm just gonna say that one's done. I'm gonna be done with that one. So freaking cool from Danica. Thank you, Danica. Okay, guys, I'm gonna go back into my big one over here. This other little guy, I have this going. Um, I want you to also think of using things like crayons. This is just like a multicolored crayon. And I'm gonna throw that on top of this too. Because you don't need special, precious materials, brand new, every single time you do art. It's impossible to do, and you're never gonna do it because you're always gonna feel like you need to go to the store. So pull out newspaper, pull out paper you have, pull out supplies you have, and just have some fun and get the creative process going for our mental state, for our love, for our health, for our being, if you're a creative person, to just create and just get your stuff out and make the stuff happen really is part of what keeps you sane. And for me, is are you guys with me out, out there? Anyone agree that like, just to create keeps you sane, you know? Often if I've had a crazy day, I just wanna come home and make something. Anyone that really knows me knows that I literally will just need to get my hands messy and mess some, with something or start to paint something. And a lot of my dear friends know that, you know, a lot of them get a little card made by me. So look at this guys, I just wanna show you. This is just some scribbles on top of my bubbles with pastel, with crayon. But look, how fun is that? little interesting details to discuss 
is that it's always good to take to start light and well let me say this better if you start dark you add lighter colors on top if you start light you add darker colors on top because you're creating a shadow and you're lifting things up um i want you guys to also get a sense that like you really can't mess things like this up and that it's more about the process of doing it and getting lost in the experience than it is about coming up with something spectacular because if you're happy and you're doing it that's the best part it's not about coming up with a masterpiece it's just about the very act of just getting into it and doing it who is with me that's right that's right that's right. All I can see on mine, because I have a couple of videos over here on Zoom, I have to admit, and I've got two front row seats of a gal named Sahara and another lady named Wendy, and they are giving me the fever. I just want you to know that I'm watching them paint. It's super cute. I wish I can watch all of you paint. The old art facilitator in me just used to love walking around and seeing how every individual person would attack the materials and would really enjoy the materials and take it on in their own way. It's to me, that's the magic of creativity. That's the magic of imagination. That's the imagination that really um, takes us to a new place. So um, that's when I really enjoyed my time facilitating art was just to allow and give people a place to do this sort of stuff. You don't need a special place to do it. I'm right on my dining room table right now. Okay, so look at my little guy here. He's done. I'm going to tackle the big ins. I'm going to do some crazy business here. By the way, guys, am I going too fast? Are we feeling good? Tell me what's up. Tell me what's up. Tell me what you need. Yeah, you ready to, you want me to show you some crazy business? By the way, Kathy Dara making comments right now on this Instagram live was the woman who insured my art studio 13 years ago. And Kathy Dara is still following along with my business. And she, oh my goodness, Wendy, that is stunning. Guys, I wish you could see what's happening on Zoom right now. That looks amazing keep going guys okay keep i want to see more wendy okay so i'm gonna get nuts now because i want you guys to see what you can do with something like this so this is how it starts and i'm gonna take a dark color and i'm literally just going to start using my hands and creating shapes Circles are the natural go-to in this because you are naturally dealing with a circle because we're talking about bubbles. But you don't have to just go with circles. It just feels good and natural to deal with shapes that already exist from the imprint of the bubble. But if you think too much about where you're putting things and you're being too strategic, it won't have flow and it won't have the energy of just creativity. So I recommend anyone that's doing this just to grab your supplies and move, like just let it fly. Grab your crayons, grab your additional paints. I actually have a little um, watercolor set. Look at this thing. I've used this so many times and I'm gonna pull it out in a minute. So I'm gonna add that on top of this. But to start, I just wanna show you how many different types of materials I'm gonna mix together to get a layered piece. Because often we'll see a piece of art, we think it's beautiful, we don't know how that person got there. And I want to bring you in on sometimes how some pieces that look similar or could be similar get there. Um, and I've said it a couple minutes ago, but I'm going to say it again. Just move. Just, and start to create your own shapes with this. Okay, gonna keep going. Looking at the comments over there. If you create some new lines like I'm creating here with the white. What's up, Janine? Hi. Um, then you can start working within those new lines. And that's the, that's the cool thing, right? Is that you want to work within new lines. So it's a piece on a piece on a piece. 
Um, and that's, that's for me what I think is interesting when you're looking at a piece of art is that it, it's layered over time and it happens over a course of time. Hi, Geraldine. I'm so thankful to everyone in my life. All of you that have taken the time and the energy and the love to set up your space tonight and get your supplies ready and join me. It makes my heart really happy to know that you've set out time for art, set out time for yourself, set out time to create, learn something new or be inspired in a new way. Um, that's all we're really here for is just to help each other and inspire each other in a new way if we can and um, help each other to see things in a new way do things in a new way, right? Guys, check it. Still messing things up, but going for it over here. Just going for it. Um, okay, so here, wait. Sometimes when I'm having a bad day, I pull out the old biggins, the old big paintbrush. And I just dip it in water. And I'm just going to jam it on top of like a pink color here. The brush doesn't even fit the paint. This is the best part, right? And you can just add it on top, just to give yourself a little, a little flare. So by adding water on top of existing watercolor, on top of um, oil pastel or chalk pastel, you get a really cool resistance. And the resist looks really slick. And that's why I love to always inspire people to check out multimedia approaches to when they're creating. Because again, it gives you that layered look. Um, and Isabel, I love you and your beautiful pottery and your ceramic magic. Isabel is here on Instagram live, live right now and she is a beautiful ceramic artist in um, Montreal and I'm obsessed. And there is Aunt Linda over there on the phone. Hi, Auntie Linda, what's up? She's on Instagram Live. I hope you're painting. I know you guys are watching this, but I hope you're creating. Who's there on Instagram Live? Are you guys actually creating or are you just watching this mess? Oh, yes, that's right. Janine, I, I think I gave you that. Did I give you that little dish by Isabel? I love the interconnectedness of life. Okay, I'm going to show you what I've created here. But again, like I've pulled out a big paintbrush. My mom. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. My mom's watching me on Instagram live. Everyone say hi to my mom. Peggy, Peggy Pratt on the mix. Mom, I hope you're making something fun. Don't take it too seriously. My mom takes her art very seriously. Okay. So I'm gonna show you what I'm doing so far. And I kind of like it when stuff gets drippy. So I'm gonna let that drip happen. So you know, mom, I don't know if you can see this, but everyone's saying hello to you. And yes, I know my mother's saying right now that I would die. I wanna see what you're making. Okay, who's with me on Zoom? What's going on over there? Claire and Elizabeth from Bullfrog. I wanna know that you guys are actually doing this. My, my ladies over at Bullfrog that have pulled this together. I wanna know that you guys are doing this. Claire, tell me, what's going on? Um, I'm making um, I'm making this. <laughs> right? I'm loving are you, it. Are you having fun? So much fun. Can the peoples on Zoom hear you? I think so, yeah, they can. And tell me, have you felt like the experience was very user friendly? Yeah, I love that we can see what you're doing as you're doing it. Like, we can see you actually working, which is good uh, creative inspiration for us. Um, did I miss anything with the bullfrog? I think I covered it all, right? No, I think you got it all. Yeah, just that we provide renewable energy for people at home and they can sign up. Uh, one thing, we do have a promotion going on right now. If anybody is interested. Who wants, does anyone want to know um, the details about Bullfrog? Because if you do, I think I've got the promotional code. As yeah. a typical 
as a typical artist, I know it's under here somewhere. I can give it to you. It's all capitals, green oh, for 15. For our 15 I found anniversary. It. Green for 15. Capitals. Yes. Green for 15. I'm going to write it down on my with my janky pencil. Green for 15. That's the code, peoples. If you want to get, what is the discount going to be? $15 off your first three months of energy, which is legit because depending on how much you consume, that's a, that's a very generous offer, I'd like to say. I'd like to say, Claire. Okay, so I'm taking now my, wa my white watercolor pencil. I've wet the paper down again, and I'm literally going on top of all the art that I've just done with the white watercolor pencil and I'm kind of cutting through it. What you're learning here tonight is that I'm a lunatic and that I like to just have fun and mix colors and see what's going to happen. If rules start to enter my zone, I feel squished and I don't feel like I'm able to really just have fun. So the idea is have fun and see what happens? Because often it's through experimentation that you're going to end up finding something, discovering something. Black Star Canuck, what's up, man? I love you back. Love you back. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. How are you guys doing? How are we doing? Oh, I think I want to see. I want to see some comments and what people are making. I want to see. Okay, who wants to see my final product? Who wants to see what I'm doing over here? I'm thinking what I might do is I might have some fun. Who wants me to pop this thing in the mail to them? Hmm? Who's paying attention? Who wants me to pop this puppy in the mail to them? Hmm? If you want this piece of art that I'm making right now, live with Bullfrog Power, send me a direct message on Instagram and I'm going to do like a little lottery and I'll pick a name and I will put it in the mail for you. So I literally mean this as soon as we finish Instagram live here, just pop your name on a direct message and I will pop this puppy in. Do I have some people wanting to be on here? Here we go. Yes. I'm going to pop it in the mail for you because I don't need to keep this and it will be so fun to give it away to one of you that's been watching. Um, I like that someone said, I dare you to send this to me. Like, <laughs> challenge accepted. Um, but it might be something else. I'm not sure if it's going to be this piece, but I can't send anything unless you send your address. Okay, check what I'm doing. Final touches. Another little interesting thing that I do is I like to leave white space on my paper or on my canvas somewhere. So even, I'll send it anywhere. Just put your name in the DM. So see what's happening here is I kind of just left all this white space around. And now I'm going to kind of just work the white space with a couple of these colors to pull it through so it doesn't look forgotten. Double dog dare you says, <laughs> Sam, I could walk this to your house. If you put your, put your name in my direct message. Okay, so this is my last minute decision is that I'm going to, for anyone that's watching, this piece of art, I'm going to throw it in the mail to one lucky person for watching and paying attention and being here and being creative. Um, so I think I'm going to stop this, this particular piece. I don't know if you can get in close to it, but it's got lots of layers, lots of energy, lots of cool little bubble dots, um, lots of textures. Oh, wait, you know what? The key to art is knowing when to stop. Who's with me on this? If you keep going on something for too long, it feels like you've collected all your energy in one place. So no when to stop. That's actually something that I learned early days when painting is that I didn't stop in, in enough time. 
and sometimes I made big messes because I had a lot to feel and I was letting it all out on my canvas and sometimes to the point of it just making a mess. Who does that? Where you, I feel like you have a lot to feel or a lot to say creatively. And then you let all that out on one piece. And then what happens is that one piece just turns to like a rag pile because you've lost your mind on it. And it just, uh, oh, say hi to Johnny for me, Janine. Hi, Milana. Hi, all you cute people. Yep, Black Star just said he went nuts with the pastels recently. And it feels good to do that. But then the results aren't always something that you're excited to, to do something with. So check it out. Right? This is what we're working on. So for anyone just tuning in, I'm going to put this piece in the mail to somebody. So send me your address. I might send these other two little pieces in the mail too that we just made today. Um, have you guys felt like you learned something today? Did you guys learn something? Did you feel like you learned something? Wendy, Sahara, I'm counting on you. Sahara, did you feel like you learned something? Are you still going or have you wrapped up? Or have you felt like you're done? You're done or you're not done? You're done, okay. I've got one last piece I'm gonna kind of mess with here. So I've got these three pieces we just kind of knocked out while we were together. And I've got this piece here. So I could take the oil pastel and because I have those dark lines, I'm just going to add to the lines. So use what you've got, pull out any type of paper, printer paper, poster paper, watercolor paper. I don't care. Use anything you have in the house, pull out all your materials. For anyone just tuning in, we started all of these paintings with bubble blowing. So I grabbed a jar and we blew bubbles with ink. This is how we started things today. We literally grabbed jars, recycle jar by the way, of my old hot peppers. And with these textures that hit the paper, this is the texture that we based our paintings off of today with those beautiful simple circular lines we were able to use multimedia like chalk oil pastel oil pastel uh, colored pencils uh, crayons more watercolor to continue art so this is a piece that i'd originally started and now i'm just adding chalk pastel lines to it so um the idea of this whole thing was inspired by bullfrog because bullfrog power said what can we do they're powered by wind. I said, what can we do with our own wind? I thought of the bubbles and this whole thing happened. Um, question, how would you frame that? Have you ever changed the look by using different textured frames? Okay, yeah. So Blackstar asked me about how to frame a piece like this. You know, as a designer, I think just like hanging art is very personal and it really has to do with um, where it's going and how much you want to spend and what else is in the room because sometimes if you have an unfinished piece of art that's not framed you have to look to other elements in the space to pull that art together um, because this is on thick watercolor paper with natural edges I would probably float it in a frame with a nice thick matting to it so that it has lots of space around it um, I, I stopped going nuts with like a very distinctive frame a while ago because unless you need a color frame in a room to pull that, that piece in, I kind of just feel like you leave the colored frame out and keep it simple. Um, so I would say float it with a big thick mat on a white frame, if that answers your question. Um, Thank you for the compliment on my earrings. They're Gaia. They're sent from Gaia. Um, 
And I'm so grateful to hear that Lindsay said that her daughter is sending uh, her painting to me. That is such a gift, unnecessary, um, but such a gift. Uh, I think that sharing art, giving art, making art, supporting artists, one of the greatest things in the whole world because you sometimes it's like these one of a kind one off expressions that really just feel like treasures in your space in your home whatever it is so guys see what i'm doing so i'm going with those lines and i'm just grabbing colors that kind of look like the colors that were in the space okay like look at me doing art literally to the second it's over but I just want you guys to know that it doesn't have to be precious. You don't have to take time that, you know, you feel you, you have to just focus on this and really give it all you've got. Just have fun, move things around, add water to it, get your hands dirty, mix some colors, see what happens, throw a big line through something, see how that looks. Um, you know, if you need to take it back, I feel like there's nothing a little white paint can't fix. Um, I often just go to the dollar store and I get that white paint and it's like, it acts like as, as a gesso. If I have a big piece, it's kind of, you add that on top. Um, and I got my friend Lisa saying that supporting artists is so important and girl, you know that I feel that because as a creative person, uh, I'm always so grateful for anyone that supports anything that I'm doing. And, uh, and I like to do the same, just give that same love, that same service back to uh, anybody in the world that is creating something that has something to share or something to give. And we should all do that for each other. It's a crazy time, but we have to inspire ourselves first to do and feel good and do and create beautiful things. Um, and then once we've done that and our cup is full, then we can go forward and we can continue to create and inspire and help others. Um, and that's, what doing something that's good for your soul does is it um, inspires you, which then in turn can fill your cup so you can give to others in any many ways. And there's so many different people to help and give and support and serve. Um, so I, I always say start with number one, make yourself happy. Do what you need to do to fill your cup and feel good on the inside of you with your heart and your being and then the rest will follow. Um, I'm gonna finish this piece and I might add this to the list of the gifts that I'm gonna throw in the mail. Um, I'm gonna have to wrap this up. Hi bless to everybody, including Michelle Silverstein who just said hi bless. But hi bless to all of you. Biggest, most amazing evening love to all of you. We have a harvest moon here tonight. We have a big full harvest moon. So that moon support is gonna be in for all of us. Um, I have to show you, I've had, I just got my new lawn sign, but imagine a greener world. Imagine a greener world. That's something I've always um, hoped I can do in any little small way ever, is to use what I have, be mindful with what I've got, and, um, be mindful of everything I'm doing, how I'm using, how I'm wasting, how I'm conserving. Um, and so thank you one more time to my friends at Bullfrog Power because it was such a touching thing um, for 11 years of being with you to be asked to do this paint night, doing something I totally love. Um, and they're saying right now, code green for 15 to get $15 off three months of green energy. So if you guys wanna do green energy, that's a pretty great discount. Um, Dawn says that she has the same sign on her lawn. Amazing. Um, oh, and Bullfrog just said, I have, I've been with you guys for 11 years. So I've uh, been a long time supporter. Um, I love you guys. I love all of you so much. Um, as I said earlier, if you want any of these paintings, I might total it up to four now. So I'll finish these up please DM me. I'll do a very private little raffle with the addresses in my DM and I'll pop these into the mail for those that have paid attention. Connie, I love you. Um, Wendy, Sahara, everybody on Zoom here tonight, Christine, everybody, thank you so, so much for attending the paint night. 
I so appreciate you guys. Do, do you feel inspired? Do you feel like good things happened here? Do you feel good? Yeah? Bless. Oh, Sebastian, I love you. I love you, Nikki. Everybody on Instagram Live. Um, okay, here's the wrap up. Here's the wrap up. Here's all the, sorry. I dropped all my paintings. We made this tonight. We made this tonight. We made this tonight. And I'm gonna finish this, and this was made tonight. So in one hour, magical things can happen. In 10 minutes, magical things can happen. In one minute, magical things can be created and happen. So remember that. And I love you guys. Thank you, Bullfrog.